first part of question one, it says differentiate with respect to X. Cool. So it tells us that Y is equal to ln X squared plus four. Y is equal to ln X squared plus four minus X tan inverse X over two. Nice and easy. All right, so this is Y. So now we're asked to differentiate this, so we need to find dy dx. So we're gonna differentiate it and we're gonna get dy dx is equal to, now when you're differentiating a log function, it's going to be, when you differentiate x squared plus four, you get two x. So that part is two x over x squared plus four. The differential of the denominator goes in the numerator. Then you're gonna to have to use product rule to differentiate this part. So it's gonna be minus using product rule, you keep the first, which is X times the differential of the second. Now, when you differentiate tan inverse, when you differentiate tan inverse of X over two, when you differentiate tan inverse function, remember that part is gonna be one over the square root, one over, one plus x over two square times the derivative of x over two and the derivative of x over two is a half. So that's how you differentiate that part. And let me not put this bracket here. Then it's going to be plus keep the second times the derivative of the first. So this is going to be dy by dx. So let us just go ahead and simplify this now. So dy by dx is working out to be 2x over x squared plus four minus, now this is how we simplify this, one times a half, one times a half, that's gonna be one in the numerator, but then this two can go in the denominator all right, so just, just to pretty it up, the two can go in the denominator to let it be the x common numerator, so it becomes minus x over a half, one times a half, you can put the two in the denominator, so it's two times the one plus x squared over two, minus tan inverse x over two. You can simplify it some more if you want, you can, but that's not important. This is dy dx. You could simplify it further by, you know, multiplying through by two to get x over two plus x squared. So instead of writing it this way, you could write, just showing you another way you can write it. Instead of saying dy by dx, I'm going to write y prime. You could write that y prime is equal to 2x over x squared plus 4 minus x over 2 plus x squared. minus tan inverse x over two. This is just an alternate way you could write it. All right, nice and easy. Now let's look at part two now. 
So for part two, it is saying now, a curve is defined parametrically as x is equal to a cos cube t and y is equal to a sin cube t. Show that the point, at, show that the tangent at the point p is the line y cos t plus x sine t is equal to a sine t cos t. So you have a point p, you have a point p and p is the point x, y, but we already, they already give us what x and y are. This is the point p, all right? Now the equation of the tangent at the point p, remember equation of tangent is y minus y p is equal to the gradient of the tangent into x minus x p. So first things first, we need to find out what is this gradient of the tangent, all right? So in order to find the gradient of the tangent, the gradient of the tangent is dy by dx. That's the gradient of the tangent, dy by dx. But in this case, dy by dx is because it's parametric differentiation, dy by dx is dy by dt times dt dx. Cool, yeah man. So this is gonna be dy dx. So let us continue. So dy by dx is gonna work out to be dy by dt. And remember up here, it said that y is equal to a sine cube t. Y is a sine cube t. So to find out what is going to be dy by dt, it's gonna be differentiate this, carry down the power to get 3a, subtract one from the power to get sine square t multiplied by the derivative of sine t, which is cosine t. So that's, that's dy, by, dy by dt, then it's gonna be divided by dx dt, now remember what it said was x. So it said x was equal to a cos cube t. X is equal to a cos cube t. So to differentiate it, we carry down the power to get three a, we subtract one from the power to get cos square t times the derivative of cos. When you differentiate cos, you get minus sine. So it's minus three a cos square t sine t. So that's dy by dx. Now this three a cancels out this three a. All right, and I'm gonna leave the rest for now. So of course, the equation of the tangent is going to be y minus y p the y point is a sine cube t. Y minus a sine cube t. And that is equal to the gradient of the tangent. And the gradient of the tangent is given by this formula, which is minus sine square t cos t. over cos squared t sine t. And then that is gonna be multiplied by x minus xp, which is x minus, x value is a cos cube t. So this is the equation of the tangent. Now, before we go even any further, as we can see, cos t is gonna cancel out the square right here, and then sine t is gonna cancel the square right here. So really and truly we have minus sine t over cos t. So we can multiply through by cos t. We're gonna multiply this equation by cos t. By multiplying by the cosine of t, what we're gonna get is y times cos t is y cos t. Then multiply this by cos t, we're getting 
minus a plus t sine cube t and that is equal to now the minus sine t times x is minus let me see minus x sine t minus x sine t and then minus sine t times this becomes plus a cos cube sine t All right, so now the question that we may ask ourselves is, minus a cos cube sine t, why is it freezing? Let me see what's going on. All right, it's back to normal, good. So look at what we're trying to prove. Notice that there's no cube. Since there is no cube, then let's just group them together. We notice that we have a y cos t and an x sine t. So we're gonna bring over this over here. Let me underline, we're gonna bring this over to this side, all right? And then we're gonna bring this over to that side. So let's do that and see what happens. Bringing over this, we're gonna get y cos t y cos t, bring over x sine t, so it becomes plus x sine t. And that's gonna be equal to, we bring over a cos t sine cube t. So bring it over here, so it becomes a cos t sine cube t. plus a cos cube, a cos cube t sine t. All right, so now all we need to do now is as you realize you have a cos t and you have a sine t here can factor out. So right now we're gonna factor out Let's factor out, let's factor out cos t sine t. We're gonna factor out cos t. Let's factor out a cos t sine t. Because both of them have a in common. So we're gonna factor with a cos t sine t. Factoring out a cos t sine t, we're gonna left back with right here, sine square t. And factoring out a cos t sine t here, you're gonna left back with plus cos square t. So left back with cos square t. But sine square t plus cos square t is one. So you can throw away that part right here now. Let me underline it, sine square t plus cos square t. That's one, all right? We know that. And so finally, all of this just works out to be a cos t sine t. A cos t sine t. And so hence y cos t plus x sine t is equal to that. Nice and easy, as we like to say, soft. Y cos t x sine t. is equal to a cos t sine t, soft, with that capital T. So proven. Now we're finished with differentiation. It should be complex numbers now. Yes, let's go to complex numbers. Part B, complex number time. So part 